Hi, welcome to the Keys Rig Rundown video at theworshipinitiative.com. My name is Adam Prince. I'm one of the keyboard players at Watermark Community Church in Dallas. I play often with the Shanes, and they thought it would be good if I jumped in and showed you guys how I use keys in a live worship context. And so um, before we get into that, um, just a little bit about myself. Um, I grew up taking lessons, um, took lessons till I was probably about 13, and then I kind of left the church, left lessons, when I was 22, came back to the church, and because I could play a C chord, a G chord, and an F chord, and kind of knew what an A minor was, I was qualified to uh, play on the worship team, and so I kind of was thrown into that and just served in every way that I could in every church that I was a part of, and uh, just kept taking opportunities and just being faithful in what I was doing and just learning stuff. Um, I'm not like a prodigy, not naturally talented all that much, and I've had to work really hard to figure out how all this stuff works, and uh, even a lot of the gear that I have, I'm using it because I'm not as gifted and naturally talented as others, and I'm making this stuff work for me, um, all with the hopes of just furthering the gospel and uh, leading people in worship. And so let's just go ahead and jump in. Um, I'm going to talk through a few different things, hopefully break this up into some different stuff because I know it's kind of overwhelming. It can be overwhelming to me even if I'm out for a few weeks and then I come back to it. I have to like remember what all of it does. Uh, so I'm going to talk through gear. I've got a Nord Stage Revision B. Um, I picked this thing up years ago um, and I didn't go out and just buy it because it was the best, most expensive board that I could. Um, I got it because of its size and the internal sounds and just for me and the way I was using it, I move my stuff a lot. I play a lot of different places and so I needed something really compact. I had a bigger board and it was just always hard to get it into my truck or into a car or with other people and so I ended up going with this just because of that. Uh, this is the Behringer motor. It's a 61 key um, controller. It's a MIDI controller. It's got motorized faders on it which can be really helpful. Uh, for controlling stuff in main stage and seeing where your volumes are at or your filters are at or whatever you have mapped before you touch the keyboard. This is a uh, MIDI fighter twister from DJ Tech Tools. This thing is so valuable. It just makes all of my software come to life and feel like hardware to me. And then um, over here I have, a, uh, I have a road case that I have put together. I've got my RME interface on it. I've got like a USB hub and a USB to MIDI converter inside of it, power strip, all of that stuff in there zip tied down. Um, I've got a drawer here where I can keep uh, extra cables and things. Um, this is not very necessary most of the time for most people. Again, I'm playing a lot of different places, and so this is something that I've built over time. And in a lot of the gear that you see me using and that you see me, um, or the plugins I'm using and all that stuff, I didn't just go out and buy it. We're not trying to give you a shopping list of things that you need to be able to uh, serve in your church. Um, these are things that I bought over more than a decade of playing, and um, everything I've kind of just picked up. and got as a solution to a problem that I personally face. So everybody's rig is going to look different. Everybody's going to have different needs. And so don't feel like just because I have this, that it's something that you need to get. So, um, oh, also I have a foot switch down here. I forgot about the foot switch. This thing is so awesome. Um, this is the, U uh, the Logity UMI3. Um, I think it was like 80 bucks on Amazon or something like that. And so I use this thing to switch patches on the laptop. It's really handy. And then let's see, so we talked about gear and I'll show you real quick how everything is connected. Um, I'm doing MIDI out of the Nord, USB out of this, USB out of this, USB out of my foot switch. Um, everything's coming in to going through here into a USB hub and then into the computer. The interface is running Firewire. I'm also running audio out of the Nord and running it through my interface. So if I need to, I can switch over to the Nord piano, which is nice in a bailout situation. I have had that happen once. Uh, my laptop had like a factory defect from Apple and it just quit working on stage and nobody even noticed when it happened because I had the audio passing through my interface. So I just shut my laptop down and just kept going with just the internal sounds from the Nord, which is nice. I always have something like that. So let me just show you some of my go-to sounds. Um, I, I'll start with my pianos. Um, 
I'd say this Art Vista piano is probably my number one. Um, so here's what it sounds without the shimmer. I have an um, on and off button, volume, and then a filter, and then shimmer, and then delay, all mapped on every one of my pianos. And that's really helpful because maybe if I'm just playing in a verse of a song, I might want a little more reverb on it. I might want it not as bright so that it's not getting in the way of the vocals. And so, and I probably will layer a pad underneath that too. And so I'll show you about my pads here in a second, but that would be my Art Vista piano. And then I would filter it up when I'm getting into bigger parts of the song or parts where the whole band is coming in. I may need to kind of poke through a little bit more, but usually when I'm playing by myself, I'll turn my actual volume up, I'll turn my filter down pretty low, give it, we put the reverb in depending on what song I'm playing, how many notes I'm playing on that song. Um, the second piano that I would say would be my go-to is this felt piano. Um, that felt piano, I'm heavily compressing it. I'm filtering out some of the string stuff on it. As you see, it's kind of noisy. And so I filter that stuff out and then add the reverb in. But it's nice. Know, just using it like that uh, a lot of times even just by itself no pads or anything it's really nice and then I'll switch over to the art Vista um, when the band comes in or at a bigger verse or a chorus or something like that um, say this would be my Rhodes and I'm using a, the native instruments Scarby Rhodes um, everything that I have I'm doing a lot of stuff with effects which um, look for some more videos on that later um, where I'm diving in further and showing you what all we're doing with effects. But that's what my road sounds like. Again, using a filter to kind of dial it in just depending on the song. So maybe this would be something I would use with like a song like with So Will I. Um, and then that's it as far as pianos go. I try to keep it a little simple. Um, I used to use a lot of different sounds and I noticed that the sound guys were kind of having trouble really dialing that stuff in. So, you know, using the felt piano, it's so different from the Art Vista that um, it really doesn't mess with the sound guy as much for whatever reason. Um, but if I, if I have a lot of things that are kind of in the same ballpark, it kind of can mess with their mix sometime. And so I try and keep things as straightforward as I can in that live setting. It's different uh, recording stuff, but for me, I found that it's better for me to do that. And then as far as uh, my primary pads, I'll move on to those. Um, I've got the Taluno plug-in with the Juno 60. I have, again, the volume for it, or the on and off, the volume, and then I've got filter, and then attack and release. And I can show you what that looks like on the mapping here, so you can see on my laptop when I move the attack moves here and when I move this one the release moves there and then when I move this one the filter moves up here and so this is great I keep this on a concert level it's just always there I can turn it on at any time and just blend it in behind some stuff and having that filter there is really great too it just kind of like adds a nice bed And then um, the next pad I would say I'd use, usually these are all being layered in. They're not necessarily by themselves. I have like a string pad from Omnisphere. Um, this one here. And I'm using that, um, like I said, with other patches and a lot of times with a piano too.
And so I don't use it by itself really. It's kind of like I might use that Juno on the verse and then kind of filter it up a little bit. And then as we get in the chorus, I'll layer this one in and I'll get the filter to where it's sitting in with the band really nice. Um, and then I have another patch over here from Omnisphere, which is a church patch, a church pad, sorry. And this one, you can see it's got a lot more going on in it. And this one I would rarely use. This would be like last chorus out of a big song. You know, we're doing like Worthy of Your Name and we hit that last chorus out of the bridge and I'm gonna kick that thing on and filter it up with everything else going and it just kind of helps give me that lift to get on top of it. And then um, I, I will sometimes have some other patches that I'll use um, like on a per song basis. Um, here's like a patch from Nexus that I'm using that I might use a, on a slightly, where I need like a little bit more in a um, verse or something. You can see which patch that is. But again, I'm gonna have all those layered in with other stuff and I'm gonna kind of like listen to the band, listen to what's happening and just dial stuff in as I go. Um, and then I'm using this board up here for textures. I have four different pads that are always there just ready for me to use. And what I like about this is I can be playing under a pastor, he can be talking, maybe doing announcements or the worship leaders doing the transition. And I have these different patches just ready to go. They're just constantly volume there. And then as soon as we hit the end, you know, and the worship leader is saying, so stand with us and, and let's worship that I could hit my little sustain button over here, let my foot off the sustain pedal and it just goes into autopilot. And it's nice because then I can, and that stuff will just keep going. And then I'll use these to take us into different parts of the song. So maybe I want more of a shimmer on something. I can put that on, or if I need a lift to get us into a bridge, I can use that. And then I have the master for all of these up here, you know? And so that's basically what I do with that. And then as far as leads go, um, I'm not really much of a leads guy. I mean, some songs just call for it. Um, and so I'll usually just listen to those and just build something specifically for that and just either map it into a section of my keyboard or maybe I'll use this or even bring another MIDI controller with me or sometimes just something just to keep it simple. Um, and as far as organs go, I'm not really much of an organs guy, um, not because I don't like them, but just because they're kind of harder to play and you have to be good. And um, it's a little harder for me to do. And so um, I don't use organ as much, um, but the organ in the Nord is really great. And so when I do, that's kind of what I'll do is I'll just switch over and um, use the organ inside the Nord. And then, um, so this is just an overview of how I'm using everything. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Uh, be on the lookout for more training videos coming where we're gonna dive deeper into how all of this stuff works and what all the details are at theworshipinitiative.com. So thanks for watching.